So, so far, uh, all the examples we have looked at only have one condition in the WHERE clause. What if you have multiple conditions? If you have multiple conditions, then you have to use Boolean operators. And there are three Boolean operators. <coughs> one is AND, and that is ALL, and the another one is NOT. For example, select the product description, product finish, standard price from the product view, where we see a parenthesis. In the mathematical operations, you always process what's in the parenthesis before what's outside the parenthesis. As you can see here, it says product description like percentage desk. Okay, so it means that well, in the description, uh, it needs to include the word desk or so this is the Boolean operator, or the product description like percentage table. So it means, well, the product description has to have the word table in it. What this statement is saying is, well, we want to include all the desks and all the tables, right? Because we are using the all operator here. Then there is another condition, and the standard price must be greater than 300. So basically what it's saying is the condition to include the record would be uh, they have to either be a desk or a table and uh, the price has to be greater than 300. It can get somewhat confusing if you have too many of these Boolean operators in your statement. The easiest way to understand these Boolean statements would be to use a Venn diagram as you will see in this slide here. In the Venn diagram, you will draw these circles, and uh, it will help you to understand what will be included and what will not be included uh, in the result. In this particular example, because the first statement is product description includes either the word desk or the table, so that means it will include both of these two circles, the desk circle and the table circle. And then the last one is and the standard price needs to be greater than 300. So if you draw another circle here, only the part that intersects with the other two circles will be included because this is an and statement. So you need to meet these conditions as well as the standard price greater than 300 condition. Only the shaded area will be included in the result. Let's revisit this statement here. Let's say if we do not have the parentheses here, let's say if we get rid of the parentheses here, what will happen? If there is no parentheses here, right, then what will happen is the SQL statement is going to process the end uh, Boolean operator first and uh, all next. So what will happen is, again, we can use the Venn diagram to draw this. The SQL statement is going to process AND first, and then ALL next. It will first look for this AND. It will first process product description like percentage table and standard price greater than 300. Okay, let's say this would be tables and greater than 300. So when the process is this AND statement, it will get this as the result. Okay, and then it will process all, which is product description like percentage desk. Then it will add desk here. Since it's an all, it means that it will include everything that's in the desk and plus whatever that's here. So the result will be this whole thing here. So as you can see, if you forget to put the parentheses, the result is going to be very, very different. So the order of processing for these Boolean operators will be NOT will be processed the first, and uh, AND will be processed the next, and ALL will be processed the next. Okay. So what if we do not have the parentheses here, and we have WHERE PRODUCT DESCRIPTION NOT like the percentage desk, and or product description like percentage table and the standard price greater than 300. Okay, so what will happen is it will first look for things that are not desks. Let's say this is desk, this is everything. Okay, so first it will look for this, not desk, and then followed by and, which would be the table that are 300, greater than $300. 
and uh, then it will look at all. So it will be everything out here plus this part. In SQL statement, there are a number of functions you can use to get aggregate or summary data instead of the detailed data. A number of commonly used functions are the average, AVG, that's the average, and uh, count to count the number of items or records, and the minimum, which will give you the smallest number, and the maximum will give you the largest number, and also sum which will add all the numbers up. When you use these functions, the syntax are all the same. You will use the function, for example, average AVG, followed by the field name that you want to get an average for, like, and within the parentheses. So for example, average standard price. Okay, so this will give you an average of all the prices. Same thing for other functions. If you want to uh, count the number of customers, you can do count, let's say, well, customer ID would be a good thing to count, right? Because every customer would have a different customer ID. So you can do customer ID, right? So it will count the number of customer IDs. Another uh, way to handle this is you can do a count of asterisk which means just count, count the number of records. Right? That's another way to deal with it. For minimum and the maximum, well actually minimum and the maximum, they are kind of versatile. You can use them for the number field. You can also use them for character fields. Let's say, for example, if you do a minimum product description, minimum product description, okay, well product description obviously is a character field. Right? So how do you find the smallest product description? Well, what it will do is it will look for the first character of the product description. If you have a description that starts with A, then it will be considered smaller than a description that starts with B. So if you have a description that starts with a number, let's say 8 jaw desk, then it will be considered to be even smaller than a description that starts with A. So that's how you get the minimum product description. And uh, also you can use minimum for the date field. So the earliest date would be the minimum date and the same thing for the maximum. So maximum can also be used for a number field, character <coughs> field, or a date field. Some can only use them for number field. Uh, and also one thing about these functions is they will give you the aggregate result. So they're not going to give you a result for individual records. They're going to give you the result for a group, uh, for the whole table. So for example, in this particular example, we are going to select count asterisk, right? We are count, counting the number of records from the order line view where the order ID equal to 1004. So it will find all the order line records that have the order ID 1004. So in the order 1004, there may be a number of order lines, maybe five order lines, then it will give you the number five. When you're using a function, the result you are getting sometimes can be just a number like five. It's different from other SQL statements where you will get a table as the result. Let me give you another example here. Select product line ID, comma, and uh, we are going to count the number of records, count asterisk, from other line table, group by product line. Now let's say you have this <coughs> SQL statement. Select the product line ID, comma, count asterisk, from the other line table, group by product line. Okay, what would you get? Well, let's say in this particular table, or the line table, you have two product lines, product line one and the product line two. And uh, let's say five products from the product line one were in the order, and uh, three products from product line two is in the order. So what you will get is you will get one product line one and with five, and product line two with three. 
because everything is grouped by the product line. So what if we change this a little bit? Let's say if we do this. We change the product line ID here to product ID. And the comma count asterisk from order line table group by product line. Okay. What are you going to get from this SQL statement? In this case, you are going to get an error message because this SQL statement will not be processed. The reason is because, well, when you're using an aggregate function like count, it's really counting for a group. But all the ID is really for each record. So you have two fields here at different levels. One is a record level field, and the other is a group level field. So you cannot really list these two in the same result. But the previous one, you know, we have product line ID, which is also a group level result, product line one and product line two. But in this case, product ID is record level result. So that's why you know, there is inconsistency there. And so you will actually get an error message. Next example here is using something called a in. In this case, let's say we want to sort the results uh, first by state and within the state by customer name. In this SQL statement, we have select customer name, comma city, comma state from customer view where the state in Florida, Texas, California, and Hawaii. What it means is, well, we want to get a list of customers who are from Florida or Texas or California or Hawaii. As long as the state is within these four choices, then we want to include a customer. So that's the in statement. <laughs> Obviously, you can use a number of equal to statements to replace the in. You can say where state equal to Florida or state equal to Texas or state equal to California or state equal to Hawaii. In is just a simplified way to do that. And also there is another statement called a not in. You can also do not in. So if you say where state not in, parentheses, Florida, Texas, California, and Hawaii, then what will happen is it will give you a list of customers who do not live in any of these four states. And then the other cross here is the order by. Order by cross will sort the results of your SQL statement. You can actually have multiple levels of sorting. In this case, we are going to first sort everything by the state. And within the state, we are going to sort the records by the customer name. So you actually can have multiple levels of sorting here. And the same thing for group by. For group by, you can also have multiple levels of groups. For example, you can say group by customer state and the comma city. And within the state, it's going to group everything by city. In this slide, it talks about the scalar aggregate and the vector aggregate. The scalar aggregate only will give you one result, while the vector aggregate will give you multiple values in the result. And the way to get the vector aggregate is to use the group by cross. If you group it by the customer state, then for each state, you're going to get a result. <coughs> if you do not use the group by, then what you're going to get is you're going to get just the one result for the whole table. Now, having, this is probably the most confusing thing for beginner of the <coughs> SQL statements. Having is really the where clause for the groups. So it must follow the group by clause. If you see a SQL statement that has having clause but no group by, you know that it's going to get a syntax error. In the having clause, usually you will use aggregate functions. And the reason is because having is the condition for the group. So usually you use aggregate functions. Let's take a look at this example here. Select customer state, count the customer state from the customer view grouped by customer state and having count the customer state greater than one. The having, like I said, it's a where cross for the group. So we only want to include the, the groups where there is more than one record 
for that group. That's why I count customer underscore state greater than one here. Say if you have a state in which you only have one customer, then that state will not be included in the result. Only when there is more than one customer, then it will be included. Let's say uh, I want to list all the customers from states where the average customer age for that state is greater than 30 and order the result by state and city. I want to list all the customers from states where the average customer age for that state is greater than 30 uh, and order by sit state and city. Okay, so how would I write that statement? Select list the customer state and I probably want to also list the average let's say age from the customer table of view and the group by the customer state and having average of age greater than 30. What it will do is it's going to first group everything by the state. Right? So you have a group of customers for let's say Hawaii, a group of customers for Florida, and so on. And then it's going to calculate the average age for each state. Let's say for Hawaii, the average age is 28. And for Florida, it's probably a little higher, like 55. Well, in the result, you will see Hawaii, you know, the average age is lower than 30, so it's not going to be included in the result. But Florida is greater than 33, right? So it will be included in the result. If you have another state, let's say Texas, let's say if the average age is 35, then it will return Florida 55, Texas 35. The next slide is about view. View is also a very, very useful tool in SQL. Uh, we talked about view in the previous chapter, and we called it user view, right? And the reason why we call it a user view is because a view is usually associated with a particular user. But it doesn't mean that a view has to be associated with a particular user. A view can be associated with a particular application. It can be associated with anything. Different users in the company may have a different view of the database. Uh, they may see different parts of the database. Another concept that's important for you to understand if you want to understand the view is something called the base table. Base table are the tables containing the raw data. So in the database, let's say in that secondary storage device, hard drive, you have the base tables. These are the tables that are actually being stored in the hard drive. Views are just the table structures. For example, it will say, well, in this view, we have uh, the customer ID, we have the customer address, last name, first name, that would be our view. It's a table structure. It doesn't actually include any data. All the raw data are included in the base table. So when you need to access the view, what will happen is you will access this table structure, and then the view is going to go to the base table to get the data to populate the view. Uh, so the result of the view is actually just a table, like the base table. Right? However, it's not physically stored on the hard drive. So that's the main difference. Um, there are two different types of views. Uh, one is called a dynamic view, the other is called a materialized view. A dynamic view is a virtual table, as I just described. It only has uh, the table structure, and it's only created dynamically upon request by a user. Right? When the user requires this view, it will get the data from the base table and create this view. Then the other type of view is called a materialized view. A uh, materialized view is a copy or replication of data. And uh, actually, the view is stored on the hard drive. So this is a different type of view. It's a view you know, that actually has data in it and it's stored on the hard drive. 
So why do you want a user materialize the view sometimes? Well, uh, mainly for performance reasons. If you want to access this view very frequently, let's say 200 times a day, very frequently, then it makes sense to have a materialized view here because this way you don't have to dynamically populate the view every time the view is being accessed. So you already have the view physically. So for performance reason, you may want to have a, a materialized view. The problem with this materialized view is because the, the data in the view is really based on the base table. So let's say if you, the base table's value is changed, data is updated, then for materialized view, you have to update the materialized view also right, in order to make sure that the data is consistent with the base table. Uh, but for dynamic view, well, since there is no data in it, uh, the data will only be populated when the view is requested, then you do not have to do anything when the base table is updated. So the dynamic view will always have the most up-to-date data in it. If you update the dynamic table, will the data go to the base table? Yes. In most cases, that will be true. You can actually update the view and have the change taking place in the base table. Uh, but uh, if there is a restriction on the update for the view, then you wouldn't be able to update the view. You have to go directly to the base table. So that's the difference between these two types of views. So why do we create views? Well, uh, for a number of reasons. You know, for example, for security reasons, uh, because we only want the users to see the data they are supposed to see and not the data they are not supposed to see. So we create these views. And uh, also, sometimes we want to simplify query comments because, well, sometimes we need to write a complicated query and it will take a number of steps to get to the result that we are looking for. So we can actually create a view with the intermediate result and then just the perform query on that view so that we don't have to go through you know, five steps to get to the information we want, only have to go through maybe two steps. So that's uh, other reasons for creating views. To create a view, you use the create view statement. In this slide here, uh, we have an example of the create view statement that's going to create a view of the more expensive uh, products in our product table. Create view followed by the name of the view, uh, expensive stuff view. S is the keyword here followed by a select statement. Here we're going to select the product ID, product name, unit price from the product table where the unit price is greater than 300. So that means uh, from the product table, we are going to choose all the products that are more than $300 and put all these records into the view called expensive stuff view. So that's how you create a view. And then there is also an optional class here called with check option. Okay, so what does this with check option mean? Well, let's say you create this view called uh, expensive stuff. And then you have a number of records here. Let's say you have a desk costs $325 and you have a chair uh, that's $500 and so on. Because all these products meet the criteria of unit price greater than 300. Well, let's say you decide that your desks are going on sale you are going to reduce the price for the desk to 295. You are going to update this record in the view. You are going to say, okay, I'm going to update this desk to $295. All right, when you try to do this, you are going to get an error message from the database management system. And the reason is because now this uh, item desk no longer meets the criteria of price greater than 300. So that's what this with check option means. It will restrict any action to update the record to make the record not meet the criteria. If you don't have with check option, then it will allow this update. So what are some of the advantages of the views? First of all, it simplifies uh, query comments. If it takes like five different queries to get to the information you are looking for, you can actually create a view 
with intermediate result. So the next time you only need to perform a one or two queries to get to the information you are looking for, right? So it will simplify query command. Assist with data security, right? Because it will limit uh, the data the user can see and it will enhance programming productivity and same thing with simplified query commands. It will contain most the current base table data. If it's a dynamic view, every time you access it, it will get the data from the base table. So the data is always up to date. And it uses little storage space because a view, especially the dynamic view, does not contain data in it. It only has the table structure and also can provide customized view for different users. You can have you know, one table, but uh, you know, many different views for different users of this table. And the last advantage is probably the most important advantage is that it establishes physical data independence. When you create a view and uh, when you perform actions on the view instead of the base table, it separates the physical data from your application. So it creates physical data independence. So why is that an important advantage? Well, let's say you have a database that has a number of tables. And then you create a view that gets data from multiple tables. And then you have written some application programs that have SQL statements, like select a SQL statement that will select the data from the view. So let's say for performance reason or whatever reason, you are going to change the physical base tables doing denormalization. You're combining these tables together. Okay. Right, so now you only have two tables in, uh, instead of three tables. So let's say you have all these applications that use the SQL to access the data in the table, that's through the view. Uh, so now you have changed the, the table structure here. Do you need to change these SQL statements from the applications? No, you don't, right? Because all these SQL statements are really referring to the view instead of the base table. It has nothing to do with the structure of the base table. So the only thing you need to change is the view. You need to redefine the view once. And then all these SQL statements will still work in the application programs. So that's the advantage of this physical data independence. So that's why today in companies, they're actually recommending creating a view for every table you have in the database. And all your applications writing SQL statements to the view instead of the actual table. Because this way, in the future, if you ever change the structure of these tables, all you need to do is just to change the definition of the view and uh, you don't have to make any changes in the application program. Some disadvantages of view include that use processing time each time view is referenced. If it's a dynamic view, every time you reference the view, it will take time to get the data from the base table. It uses some processing time. <laughs> and also the view may or may not be directly updatable. So sometimes when you make an update, you may not be able to do it on the view. You have to go to the base table to do it. And if it's a materialized view, when you make a change to the base table, you also need to make sure that uh, the view is updated.